like to breathe, grab a beverage or two. We got professional guests with lots of stories for you. So take a seat right here and join us on Careers Over Beers. Here we go. All right. This is Careers Over Beers podcast. Once again, welcome back if you're a comeback listener or a repeat listener, I guess I should say. Um, today I have Luke Klaus on, and he's a landscaper, I believe. That's right. Is that what you do? It is. And we're getting into some whiskey today. Yes, we are. Some Why good, are we doing that? Some good stuff. And it's eight in the morning. That it is. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's evening time. But we are getting into some whiskey. I got some fancy ice balls here for you. And we're drinking Old Forester 1910. So shout out to Joe Wendell. He's the one that gave me this. This is some good stuff. Hard to find. I don't know if that's the kind of whiskey you prefer. Oh, yeah. any Anything, really. Anything? Get that ice ball in there. The good stuff is. I've already had a few drinks. Treat. Oh no, my ice ball split in half. Son of a bitch. You have to drink it faster so it doesn't dilute. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, I'll let you do the honor, sir. Old Forester 1910. Have you ever tried that stuff before? I have. The 1910 or the 1920? Because a lot of people confuse them. Is that right? Yeah. Do you know your whiskeys here? A little bit. I'm not like. <laughs> I dabble. All righty, well, let's get into these things. I don't think things. I've had this one, now that you say it. No? No. <clears throat> All right, sir. Before we get into it, you're Luke Klaus, you're a landscaper, and we're drinking whiskey. That's right. Is that right? Correct. Cheers, sir. Cheers. What do you think? Very good. Yeah? Very smooth. That's a decent whiskey there. Old Forester 1910, so... The guy that gave me that says it's pretty hard to find around here, at least. Really? The 1920 and the 1930, I think, are way probably, more popular. Probably had the 20. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah, not bad, man. So. Appreciate it. Hells yeah. But this podcast is about you, so tell me what you do, man. Uh, I am an owner of a landscape company here in uh, Wichita. And uh, you're the boss man. I am. Uh, we actually we just celebrated our 10 year anniversary this week. Did you really? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That's perfect timing, then, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. 10 year anniversary of drinking 1910 Old Forester. Had to happen, I dude. Guess. It's meant to be. It is. Yeah. So uh, we. Uh, Started uh, in 2012. Um, I've been in the landscape industry um, actually since high school. Um, kind of dabbled here and there in different different jobs and different careers and stuff. And <clears throat> matter of fact, my first landscape job was uh, I think you had him on your show, um, Brady's. Oh, really? Yeah, Stephen Brady. Yeah, his worked, family worked for his dad and his uncle and his aunt during high school i didn't know that yep wow yep high school into college actually um, learned tons from them uh, yeah good people mind uh, just keeping this a little bit closer yeah, to sure. your mouth you sure. can pull it all the way back there <clears throat> yeah i got to actually one of my assignments one summer was i spent time in the greenhouse with joe brady yeah and uh yeah is that steve's dad that was his grandpa. Oh, his grandpa. Okay. Yeah. And he probably started Brady Nursery then, didn't he? He did. Yeah. He did him and his uh, wife. Be I think their first first nursery is on Kellogg and Tyler. Yeah, over by the Cotillion. Uh, well, they're there now, but they used to have a a uh, their first nursery was actually Kellogg and Tyler. Oh, that's further east then, isn't it? Yep. And they had a. I didn't know that. Yeah, they had a, a cellar there. A root cellar so they actually would store they'd get their tree liners shipped in and then they would store those trees and then their root cellar oh no you'd have to go retrieve them 
you know, when it was time to go plant. Uh huh. But yeah, one summer we I learned how to prune roses and things like that with with Joe and listened to a ton of NPR for sure. <laughs> <laughs> is he still around out there uh no he's not he's not no, no no i can't remember when he passed but but yeah well he's got a very successful nursery of his own you know oh brady def- nursery definitely everybody knows that in wichita yep yep so that's where you kind of got introduced to all this stuff with plants and everything and just kind of learned the ropes right right i started started there um and while i was while i was there i was actually going to college to, thought I wanted to be a graphic designer yeah um, and I hated that <laughs> uh, it sounded cool on paper oh yeah and then it was extremely boring once you started getting really? into it. I just couldn't sit still that long in front of a computer but um I did enjoy the design side of it I guess and then so I kind of moved into landscape design and holder culture yeah um switched my my school major at the, yeah yeah, I guess you could say. I well, never, that's on the computer too, right? Doing landscape design. It is back then, though. There were that those classes is all by hand. Oh, okay. We're teaching the the old old school way. Yeah. Um, I actually had to teach myself on the computer by by myself. I was I what? didn't didn't finish college. Um, just did the landscape design and horticulture side of it. I was working for Brady's at that time at the same time and then it just slowly kind of converted and just kind of came together right well you were doing it all on paper back then in college and stuff and that's the only way you really knew how to do it yeah that's how they originally used to teach yeah it was then you started drew drew by scale yeah and then you started teaching yourself how to do it on a computer using software and stuff that's designed for that right way way down the road oh okay as i yeah as i started my company and and started yeah go back to that so what happened between then so you dropped out of school just to work landscaping full-time for the brady's uh no actually i was still i when i worked through with brady's i uh was still going to school um and then i actually i think i was 20 20, 2021 um decided to move to a different nursery uh in wichita um and started working there and I think my first position there was I actually started doing like lawn applications and tree care, a lot of tree care because I knew quite a bit about trees from working at Brady's. Yeah. Um, you probably didn't do much lawn work when you were with Brady's, did you? No, it was a lot of just landscaping and just like trees and shrubs and stuff like that. Right. I did did that periodically, but most of the time I spent time out in the growing fields at Brady's. So. Mm-hmm learned how to you know from basically grow a tree from a sapling all the way to you know a four or five inch diameter tree yeah so could identify trees without leaves and that sort of thing can um, you still do that can yeah yeah not all of <laughs> the them skill that carried too over. many but yeah, yeah quite a few of them and then you had no clue at this point back then that you were ever going to start your own business no no, I was just trying to make a buck at that point. Yeah. Um was going to have a child at a young age. And so I basically was just doing anything I could to, you know, make enough money to knew I was going to have to support him. Yeah, and once that happens, man. Then for sure. For sure. Um, <clears throat> so I worked for that company for about 12 years. Um, kind of moved my way up, learned a lot of different skills, a lot of different just everything in the industry from the management side to uh, care, the maintenance side of stuff, and the landscaping, Mm -hmm. Um, customer care. Consulting with customers, stuff like that. Right, right. Did that for quite some time, just kind of moved moved up with that business. Um, But matter of fact, when I interviewed with that guy, um, he said, where do you see yourself in 10 years? And I said, well, I'd like to own a company like this someday. Really? Yeah. And he tried to talk me out of it, of course, and tell me all the bad things. He didn't want any competitors, huh? Well, uh, I don't know if it was necessary <laughs> that. I think he was trying to teach me of how hard it is. Yeah. Or how hard it could be. Um, and so year 12, when I was at that that job, 
that's where I was like, okay. Well, you I were see. kind of already doing all that stuff, right? That that it, that is required of you to run your own business. Yeah, you were handling all those things pretty much. Pretty much, just didn't have the say so of to get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a lot of a lot of the management, you know, responsibilities, but couldn't get the couldn't please the customer all the time. Yeah, I had to run it up the ladder and try to get. You, know, you weren't. You couldn't make your own decision because you weren't the boss. Correct. You had to answer to somebody. Right. Right. So that kind of opened my eyes of how I also saw they're one of the largest in in probably if not this part of the state. Um, I saw an opening. I guess of we saw. I saw a lot of turnover. Saw a lot of neglect as far as customers went um, and employees. And I guess I just said, well, I can. I'm going to try it. Yeah. I can do this. Same worst, thing. worst thing can happen is I fail and I just go get another job. I mm-hmm. guess. So, um, so yeah. And then 2012, I jumped in. Was it scary? It was, it was, I was doing a lot of moonlighting at that point too. So I was already, you know, trying to make extra money, any, any money I could. So I was spending Saturdays and Sometimes even Sundays, you know, landscaping people's homes or... Train. That's probably smart that you did that rather than just quitting your job and going, okay, now we're going to start. Right. You yeah. know. So I actually built up some clientele by doing that. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, it wasn't crazy scary then probably because you knew that you did have some customers. Some, but it wasn't... I mean, I could count them on one hand. So yeah. it wasn't like <laughs> It wasn't like enough that I was... Luckily, I had a, a wife that was ready to support us. And she was all cool with it? She was. I think she was a little afraid, but she she trusted me. And Did you have any of your own equipment and stuff at that time? Oh, no. Back then when I was moonlighting, I mean, I could thank people forever for giving me a chance. I borrowed trucks, uh, equipment, trailers, whatever I needed, you know, and slowly bought as I as I needed stuff, but... But day one, when you quit, ten thousand dollar credit card is what started the company. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, wow. maxed out immediately. Immediately, just on tools and things like tools, that. Tools, you know. I think I traded in my wife's Jeep to get a truck. Wow. And then took my truck and got her more of a family vehicle. And what were the essentials that you knew you needed from the start? A truck. A truck. Yeah, that was probably the main thing. Probably a shovel too, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Which those are pretty easy to get. Yeah, those are cheap. Had those, but you didn't have any machinery or anything, though, did you? Like no, bobcat or skid steer. Nope, nope, no. That came. I want to say year two or three. A lot of it. Those first few years were definitely uh, my first employee, which is now my operations manager. It was just him and I, and a lot of long. Days. Long days. Oh yeah, long days, long nights, a lot of sweat equity for sure. Yeah. Um, but I think the second big purchase was a dump trailer. Um, I got a loan to do that, and definitely <laughs> killed my credit for the first probably, probably eight or nine years for sure. Aren't you glad you did though? Oh yeah, definitely. Now I, I mean, am. it worked out. You had a long term goal, so yep. it wasn't like you were just burning it for nothing. Yeah, for sure. But still, part of you probably was thinking at some points, like, I don't know about this, or this might not be the way well, to there, go. Or There was times I was like, I, I think I could go get my job back for sure. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. That's that's a crazy feeling that a lot of people don't get to experience that have never started their own business or tried to or anything. You yeah. Know? I mean, if I did it all over again, I'd totally do it differently. What would you do? <clears throat> Write a business plan. Really? Yeah, probably write a business plan, go. I didn't know any, I didn't know you could go to WSU and, and get support as a lo, as a small business and get really educated and things like that and and SBA loans and, you know, all that good stuff. Um, I just kind of jumped in with both feet. and. So you would have had a little more help along the way if you would have. I think so, but, I mean, I definitely had tons of help. I had mentors. I had family members friends total total support total support yeah had a lot of support a lot of people believed in what i was doing and believed in me and i owe that you know to all of them right 
you could have gotten some loans though for equipment and stuff too at the yeah, start. Yeah, which I have. Yeah, oh yeah, they can help you. Like I didn't know that. Yeah, they'll help you. Uh, well, I actually went there at one point, you know, down the road, um, and I think they actually did help me get my my first SBA loan, um, which is just a small business loan. Uh huh. I think we did a consolidation loan, and then I got a little bit more money. I think I bought my first couple lawnmowers um, because we were getting a big. Co- contract yeah that required that kind of equipment um and at first were, were you making just enough money to barely make it and stay alive or much. were you raking in some profits no we were it was just like and it was probably all right back into the company right yeah, yeah. everything you got it was definitely where's our next meal coming from there for a while wow like i said i mean my wife was she was stable and she had a good career and so she was able to kind of help the household for years while mm-hmm. we kind of built it up but yeah i mean i immediately went out and got employees and i was having to figure out how i was going to pay them you know by the end of the week and do you remember your first customer on your own oh yeah what was it was it just a residential home yep yeah one of my mentors actually uh, i would consider him a mentor i think he would enjoy that I'd say that but um, he's a very successful businessman Um, now a family friend I consider him Uh, we still work for him to for this to this day oh really yep yeah that's cool so it was his and he was the one I was doing like some moonlighting stuff I do like their flower pots every year and trimming the shrubs different landscape you know type things they live Mm -hmm. in College Hill area so a big lot that needed lots of upkeep and so there's always something for us to do there that's cool and so that was kind of one i guess stepping stone i knew i knew i could always get fed there for yeah sure. there, was there ever a moment when you first got into it and you were getting customers you're like wow like this is actually working out oh yeah yeah there's definitely you know there's always those times where you're like man it's this we're cooking you know we're doing great you know, and then a transmission would go out on a truck or, you know, yeah. something. There's always those ups and downs. But, but yeah, it was definitely um, – I, I took the slow and steady pace at it for sure. I didn't just go out and just buy everything at right at once and everything I need. And yeah, I need a skid steer. Where I justified everything that we, we needed. I, it's got to be kind of an overwhelming feeling because I just thinking about moving into my new house, you know, I move into my new house and I'm like, okay, well now I have a million things to buy and any little project that comes up, I need a tool for that or I need something for this. Yeah. I can't even imagine with like a landscape business, there's a tool, there's so many different tools that you guys use out there yeah. on the job. It was definitely a big rental. Bill. Probably never ends. I mean, it still probably is going on where yeah, you're like, I need this now. I need yeah, this. Yeah, we still rent. I mean, I to this day we don't own everything that we we need because we don't need it every day um until we need it or justify that it's going to pay for itself that's Uh that's when we work it into our schedule to buy but yeah it's pretty overwhelming how long did it take for you to get an employee when you first started uh almost immediately really yeah i pretty much had a conversation like we are right now one of my brothers had a friend and he's like, Hey, he's looking for a job. And, and I think he probably thought it was just going to be like a short term, you know, just like a moonlighting thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're going to go help short, Luke out over short time the- deal. We, we talked over a beer and I just like kind of laid it all out and told him my hopes and my dreams and what I was trying to do. And, and he was just like, let's do it. Yeah. 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 And so that's how a lot of good things start, man. Yeah, a yeah. beer with a buddy. Yep. And thinking then, of ideas. That's so this week is actually his anniversary of of being employed with me. Uh, awesome. Years. Yeah. Well, this is perfect timing then. Yep. Big milestones right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, man. And what were your goals? Do you remember from the from day one? I think at day one it was like I want to. I think my biggest goal was I was after my last employer. I was like, I think I can be as good as them, if not better. Um, and I definitely didn't 
want to be so big that I had 200 employees or anything like that, but I definitely wanted to have the quality that they had and, and, you know, some of the clientele that they worked for and things like that. Were they doing residential homes or more commercial type places? Both. Both? Both, yeah. Probably a lot of high-end residential and then a lot of HOA work and um, commercial installs and things like that. Where's the money at in landscaping? It's not residential, I'm assuming. There's there's quite a bit of money in residential. Is there? Yeah, you can make just as much money sometimes on a residential, like what I would call a residential remodel. Like if we went to your home that's already established and picked, you know, drew you a new design and said, we're going to keep this, this, and that, but we're going to add this, or we're going to put in a new patio for you or, yeah, you know, that kind of thing. You can make sometimes just as much, if not more, doing something like that than you can like say a new construction oh okay because usually a new construction home everybody spent their money on the drapes and the paint and you know the right. last last thing they're thinking about is the grass and some people that budget themselves correctly you know mm-hmm. plan plan the, the grand scheme of things but, that's a good point i guess yeah never really thought of it like that but yeah they'll usually like uh, a builder will say, "Here's your here's your budget for your landscape, and what that what that will get them is probably a sprinkler system and some grass." Yeah, that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> and a, probably a lot of them are, like you said, more focused on the house, anyways. So they're like, ah, well, they'll, those trees and stuff, that'll come later, right? Or they want to upgrade, you know, lighting fixtures <laughs> or you know, yeah, that sort of thing. So they get over budget, and then they've dipped into the landscape budget. Yeah, for sure. Plus, like, if you're redoing something at a house, there's probably some more work involved with that. If there's yeah. if there's already stuff there, yeah, and they want to, like, oh, I want this all ripped out. I want something totally new. Yeah, you're tearing a lot more out. You're Rather doing, than just starting in an empty yard. Oh, it's definitely a lot easier to come in to a brand, you know, open lot and mm-hmm. put in the irrigation system. And you don't have to compete with a tree that's been there for 80 years or something like that, you know there's a, definitely a lot more work to it so yeah our labor cost is going to be higher and um, which in itself makes it a little more profitable yeah um, but those can be fun too because you've already got some established trees and things like that, that that you can build off of does that ever hurt your heart when you see a big tree like that taken taken down cut oh, down oh, a lot yeah that bothers me i don't know why i'm not like a <clears throat> giant tree hugger or anything but when i see like an 80 year old tree it's just massive trunk, you know, and somebody's like, yeah, we're taking it down. Yeah. Like, you, why? You think of how long it's been there. Yeah. And, you know. Some old, some proud owner probably planted that back in the day, you know, like, this is my tree. Yep. Yeah. Had a tire swing on it, and now you're just chopping it down. Yep. Yeah. It's, I think the old saying is when you plant a tree, you should have planted it yesterday. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because big trees, I mean, it just takes them so long to get to where they're at. Yeah. When they're that large, right? It just sucks having to start from scratch. Yeah, you can't replace it either. You can't. Yeah, we physically cannot replace something like that. No, there's no moving. How old can a tree be before it gets too old to move? It depend, uh, depends. Depends on, on average on I guess. the species. Um, I mean, there's there's definitely some spade trucks that can move a 90, 90 inch spade, so you can get into that ten to twelve inch in diameter tree. How does that not fuck up the roots and everything? It it does, but you're getting so. The, we always say the f- the farther the branching goes out, you know, you're oh you're yeah, this branch that's about where the roots start or stop, um, stop. Okay, <clears throat> and so you always are going to cut some of them, but you're you're when you spray a tree like that, you're definitely not going to get a whole lot of activity f- from it for first you know a couple years or so just because um, it shocks it yeah it's got to it's got to reestablish its root system before it plans on putting any energy to new branches or yeah or or, or height have you ever had any weird requests from people that have like wanted whether it be a big tree moved or just something that's stupid that doesn't make any sense uh, do couple. you have stories like that oh yeah a couple well I tell think, me some of those <laughs> i think the latest one that i just off off offhand that I can remember is a lady wanted a water feature in her landscape and she wanted to make sure that we didn't disrupt her pet frog. 
<laughs> her pet frog, huh? Yeah, that lived in the landscape bed. So she had like a little toad hut that it lived Was it a in. wild one that she yeah. just started taking oh, yeah. care of? Yeah. She yeah. had a little toad hut. She befriended it, and she wanted to make sure that it stayed intact, you know, <laughs> that we didn't didn't mess with – I don't even remember if it had a name, but – she didn't think of maybe moving it out of there while you guys were working for a little while? No. Mm. No. I mean, it was kind of off to the where its little hut was, was off to the side, but she basically made the request of if we saw it, you know, that to gently, you know, <laughs> set him off to the side. And she basically built the whole landscape for the frog. Like she wanted you guys to cater to this frog? Yeah, but she spent the money for that habitat for that frog. You're kidding me. No. No. She knows those things don't live long, right? Oh, yeah. How long does a toad live, I guess? I I don't don't, even know. know, It can't be long. I know they go underground to hibernate, you know, in the winter and stuff. I've seen some pretty fat ones. Oh, yeah. We used to take June bugs and just throw them at them, and they'd slop them, (laughs) eat them all up, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, that was was a bizarre one. I mean, she's very nice, you know. Oh, just probably a sweet old lady that just got attached to this little toad. Yeah, she got attached to it. Did you see the toad? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the year the year following he did stick around. Like he's Is that around. right? Yeah, he stuck around there. He enjoyed the, the water feature that we provided for him. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of those toads that comes out and you're like, Oh, the boss is out. Yeah. Be on your shit. Yeah. He's roaming around. <laughs> yeah. Make sure it's all tidy. That's hilarious, man. Yeah. Uh beyond that I not real bizarre stuff i mean we have definitely have some eclectic customers for sure have you had some customers that ask for something that you're just flat out like nope not doing that or maybe looked into it and you're like i don't think we're gonna be able to do that i've had jobs where i'm like i think we can do it and then i dive into it like and it's such a big project and then like so many dollar signs and yeah. you know that's what I was looking at was the dollar signs like oh yeah we can do it and I bowed out pretty quickly once it took me about a month of of trying to estimate it and bid it and I think that all they were doing was putting out for pricing and it was pretty extravagant yeah that's got to be kind of nerve-wracking whenever you're doing a job that extravagant or if you're doing something super expensive have you ever had something like that where you're like the oh, yeah. stone that we're using or whatever it might be is yeah we've moved like marble statues that were i don't know how old i mean i can't even remember how old they were but delicate you know and move them from one place to another and build a a pillar for it um <laughs> you know there's definitely been some stuff that you're like do not let that break right and there's got to be some lines that you draw there too when you're doing stuff like that because you're not just going to take somebody's trash out usually right or move their delicate stuff i mean where's your lines that you draw when you're like okay we're not going to do this for them no matter what you know uh or do you just kind of go as you i mean i just jack the price up and if they were willing to spend it then we'll do it really <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> even if it's some I'm, crazy shit yeah i mean i'm i'm not gonna ask any employee that i have to do anything i wouldn't be willing to do yeah um but most i mean i definitely there's some lines that get you know we get frustrated that where it's like why are you like you can't you go me? do that you know like you live there you yeah know, that type of thing but um we just kind of well dealing with customers i know just from other things that i've experienced in life that a lot of people tried to rope things into other jobs that are being done you know they're like oh well the landscape crew while you're here yeah while you're here landscapers um you mind picking up all this dog shit in the yard that's definitely something that we do not want to (laughs) do and there's definitely customers that don't do it will you still throw a number out though if i'm like hey luke i know you guys are out here trying to build me a, a patio but all that dog shit just looks like trash in my yard. You can get that out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd give you I'd give you a dollar figure. Yeah, two grand will do it. <laughs> yeah. Some rich dude will do it. Or I'd give a card. I'd say, hey, or call this guy. He's call the poop scooper. Poop scooper. Yeah. He handles that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I know, man. That's that's something that's weird about people is they always try to rope things together and pull you into jobs that aren't even part of what you do. Yeah. You know? Well, and when you're on a tight schedule, 
to and you're already there and yeah you know it's going to take let's say a week and then they start adding and adding and adding they want you to do it while you're there and Mm -hmm. that's usually a tough conversation of trying to move on to the next you know it's not fair to the next person you're right all these other people we have scheduled out that are waiting Yep. yep that's where you bring in a change order and with a price tag and yeah i mean and once you get a bigger crew and everything you're able to probably pawn them off on some other jobs here and there and yeah we can definitely i mean compared to where i was you know 10 years ago we yeah. can definitely suffice most things you know we're able to move move crews together or, you know right or, or, or pull people from one one area to you know speed speed the process up or meet a deadline and i kind of wanted to get into that like give me a little timeline on how your company grew with the all the employees that you have now okay um probably i think probably the first five years it was probably a comfortable number of about five or six employees and off and on um, some would, you know, come and go. I, mm-hmm. But I had some solid employees from the get-go um, that have been with me, you know, pretty much the whole time. Um, then we slowly built up to about 10. Um, and then I think today we're at like 26. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, we're at... And I've, I know you guys personally, and I don't even... I thought... 26? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, which... I think there's probably a handful of those guys that you could consider seasonal help. Mm-hmm. They still come back every year. Yeah. Um, you need some more whiskey? Sure. I know she's taking water sips there. Oh. Just What's that all about? Dry mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, obviously, a lot of your stuff is seasonal, working outside, landscaping with people's yards and trees and everything. In the wintertime, what's... What do you guys do? Uh, if it's dry, if we can get a shovel in the ground, we're still landscaping. We're either we're doing hardscaping, which would be like a, wall, a retaining wall or a paver patio, mm-hmm. or, or or preparing somebody's landscape for the spring. Um, we've definitely learned how to how to keep moving, and we've been busy enough to have be and fortunate enough to have that type of work. Um, but if it should snow, we do have snow contracts and things like that. Though. Yeah, you guys do snow removal and things like snow that, too. Snow nice, yeah. So is that just something that you decided to start doing? It's kind of a necessary evil in the business. Really? As far as I'm concerned, there's definitely companies out there that they that don't, like, mess with they it? don't want to touch it. Um, it's, it is one of those things that at first I didn't have a whole lot of contracts with. I, had a, I think I went and bought a $10,000 plow used it that year and then it sat for three years because we didn't get any snow yeah you know it was kind of one of those things but um it's like when the ice storm happened here like 2005 and every single person i knew bought a generator yeah and they haven't used them since (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) yeah 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 probably a lot of them went garage sales yeah i know how that stuff works yeah um it was just kind of one of the it's another way for me to keep my my guys employed i like to keep my soul you know really anybody that's willing to stick with us i'll I'll try to keep them full-time and fully paid Mm year-round because you guys don't even though you do landscaping year-round as far as like stacking stone or building a patio or making a waterfall or whatever Mm -hmm. when it comes to like grass and stuff like that you're mowing quite a bit right uh, yeah, we do a lot of commercial mowing. Commercial mowing, yeah. yeah. So about, you know, I guess that's probably eight or nine months out of the year. Yeah, and then there's no mowing, obviously, in the right. wintertime. So that snow probably covers or bridges that gap for you. It you does, know? if it happens. If it happens, Most yeah. of the time, though, there's at least three or four events that help pay for that. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the time it's ice, putting down ice melt or putting down salt on parking lots and stuff like that. So with snow and ice, you're not doing any roads or anything. You're just doing parking lots and yeah, mainly mainly park, parking lots. Mainly parking lots. There's a couple community or there's one community that we do their roads, um, like a cul-de-sac type deal. Yeah, like gated. Okay. Like a gated. 
area that we just kind of do their loops. Yeah. Um, just to keep them clear. So at least if they get out of their driveway. All those bougie people in, behind the gate. Right. They're like, we, we don't have city people coming in here. Right. Which We're it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't really make any sense because it, all it does is get them to like the main road and then they, they're yeah. still in the snow. But, but <laughs> Those people don't leave in the snow anyways. Right. They just get everything catered to them in their big houses. Yeah. Or if they do, they get stuck and then they're out. I think this last, I think I was telling Jordan this last uh, event we had, I think you could have made more money pulling people out of the ditch than you could have. Maybe you should start that. Yeah. Get a winch on all your trucks. Yep. Like, hey, we'll just drive around and pull you out. Yeah. If we would have had the time, I think I would, probably would have. But if yeah. you're interested, you could. <laughs> you want me to come on and do that for you? Yeah. Just pull people out? Get you a truck. That's some Andale Country Boy shit right there. I've pulled out a truck before. It is. Yeah. <laughs> do you plan on branching out to any other different services at all? Or are you set, Are you content with what you have right now? I'm pretty comfortable with where we're at. Um, I've kind of dialed back some stuff and, you know, focused on what makes us money and what we're really good at. Yeah. I think that's important to realize, you know, you can't do everything. You can't do it all. Yeah. At one time, I thought I wanted to build pools and things like that and add that to our our um, packages. But after being around it uh, enough, I think I'll I'll let them do it. And That's a whole different animal, I think, is. building yeah. a swimming pool. Yeah. I know a guy that does that for a living, actually, and that consumes his entire summer, usually. Yeah. And it's that's a whole different thing, man, because you're dealing with all the covers and the liners. Yep. All that weird stuff that you probably haven't dealt with at all in landscaping. No, we can definitely dig the hole and do the plumbing part. But That's true. There's, yeah. There's definitely stuff that we don't, you know, without being in the industry or having somebody teach us, we, we wouldn't know what we're doing. Yeah. But we could definitely do, like, natural pools. I, that's something that we've talked about. Yeah, least. I mean, you do ponds and stuff, right? Yeah, which those have become fairly popular. Some people like, like that sort of thing. So. Mm-hmm. At one point, I might try to do one in my backyard just as practice. And you can invite all your employees over and yeah, have a have like a hey, dig, have a dig party. Your dig party, <laughs> I'll bring pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let them swim in it after. I saw a funny ass meme the other day, and it was like, uh, if you're over forty, just hire movers. None of your friends want to come over and break their back all day for a free slice of pizza and a beer. That is totally true. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's like you definitely find out who your true friends are when you move. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the ones that are willing to help you the out. People, which shout out to Jordan because yeah, he helped me out. The one that shows up, you know, that's your best friend. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not fun, man. Yeah. That's There's not enough beer and pizza in the world. No. No. Yeah. It, I better be getting paid if I'm doing something like that, unless right. it's a good friend or right. family. That's right. Because <laughs> my dad still makes me do shit like that. Yeah. He ropes me into everything. I told my wife when we moved, I I, I realized, like, how much stuff we had. And yeah. I was like, I, there's a reason why they make your notes, like, 30 years long, because nobody <laughs> wants to do <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to get involved with that. Yeah. What do you think your biggest bread, or not bread, am I saying that right? bread and butter I'm, I'm trying to think of a term what do you think your biggest money maker is I guess that's uh, what I'm trying to ask like is there a certain type of job whether it be commercial mowing or just landscaping in residential areas for like building their patio or pool area I would say probably the right now it's the landscaping side of stuff just like going to a house and landscaping it Right. Making it look nice, start to finish, putting in. That's the your bread and butter. Putting it, yeah, putting in the irrigation, putting in the sod, putting in on the trees and the shrubs, the patio, that sort of thing. Um, there's definitely a lot more uh, overhead in that sort of thing compared to like mowing, you know, right like maintenance type stuff. But the mowing's so competitive, and there's so many people doing it. There's companies know. that just do mowing, right? right? Right. But not everybody does landscape or designs landscapes. Right. Right. Yeah, there's a little more to it. So that you would say that's like, if you could describe your company, that's what you're going to be doing. I mean, I've seen you at the home show and stuff. Yeah. And that's how you have it set up, I know. Yeah. Is when people walk by, like, oh, that would look great in my backyard. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's right in our name, the landscape and design. That's, that's 
my passion and that's that's what i want to do the the mowing and the maintenance i that's fine too i I like it i enjoy it it's kind of again one of those necessities to you know we do a beautiful landscape and then people are like well i don't know i don't want to take care of it and yeah so you're you know you kind of then you're kind of stuck with it a little bit yeah Yeah. it's a way to keep your employees paid too and well, anything in the service industry is going to make you money too. Yeah, mowing, spraying the weeds, you know, you know starting up the irrigation system, all those, yeah. stuff, all those sort of things. I'm going to move your mic just a tad bit more down. Okay, here. Sorry. sorry. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, I wanted to ask you more about like the design and everything about that. Mm-hmm. So that's your passion, you said. Yeah. What's that like? Like, let's say I have an empty yard. I just built a new house and I'm like, Hey Luke, get you guys over here and tell me what I need to do. Sure. Cause there's a lot of people, my dad included, cause he's going to hire you guys in the future when he's ready to do it to just redo everything and make it look nice. So you're trusted in some sense to make it look nice and how you would want it. Where do you even begin? Um, we have three different designers. So including myself. Oh really? Uh, yeah. So usually either one of us would go and meet with your dad or or the customer and just i want to see everything i want to see what your kitchen looks like i want to see what your tastes are um all that sort of thing so we can bring shit bring the inside out yeah i mean there's some people that like straight lines there's some people that like curvy stuff curvy stuff or that's kind of cool i didn't know you were doing that more of a bouquet of you know plantings or some people like a lot stuff that's a lot more structured um, so those things we try to learn about the customer um, what colors they like what colors they dislike um, where have they traveled you know all those things kind of come into play what are their interests some people want a pickleball court some people want you know a jacuzzi some you know pickleball's all, huge in wichita <laughs> oh yeah yeah last <clears throat> actually last spring we did one that they they put a pickleball court in the backyard yeah yeah it was pretty cool it's a big deal in wichita for some reason yeah i don't know how it became that way yeah i don't know it's like it's on fire i think yeah. in the whole state it's i read something like, the other day that said we're like the pickleball capital right now in america I think I saw for people that. to come I think around i saw that article there's like <laughs> another place opening or something yeah, like that. yeah. Like leave it to wichita yeah we don't have much else we got pickleball and restaurants or, yeah i was gonna say the same thing it's either a restaurant now it's a uh, car washes car wa- oh my god dude what the hell i don't, I don't get it they're, they're blowing up it's like mcdonald's in the 50s or 60s yeah, i don't get it's it like a new car wash every week i see pop up yeah have you done any landscaping for the car washes no we haven't no, no. No. Anyways, back to what we were saying. So you're basically personalizing. Like you'll you'll get an idea of who this person is. Like, sure. oh, they like this. Their taste is like this. And then you kind of personalize yeah. their design. Yeah. All the time we get people that say, oh, my grandmother liked, loved peonies or whatever, or this type of peony. And so we try to remember that sort of thing. And so when we come and present the landscape design to them, it has – all the little things that we remembered what they told us and that we try to capture something that will one grow with them as they live there and also stand the test of time that's cool if if they you know and some people are they're just doing it to make it look presentable and Mm -hmm. they don't plan on staying there for a long time right but there's definitely a lot of customers that it's retirement home or they're very passionate about just entertaining and being out outdoors and you can tell that they they want to make it something to last right that they're going to be using a lot right that's cool right that's a whole new thing i didn't even think about that you guys do kind of get the customer's taste on things and then um god what else was i going to say i had something else i was going to ask yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, it's we can we can bring what we think will look good and what you know what, what will work, but we also want them to enjoy it and they have to love it because they're the ones that are going to mm-hmm. live there. And, and so you have two other designers. There's three of you total, right? 
when you go to somebody's house and you're like, okay, this is kind of what they want, do you all go and do your own thing and then bring back your designs? Or do you all kind of brainstorm together? Uh, it depends on the project. We do definitely brainstorm quite a bit. Really? I wouldn't say I design as much as I used to. <coughs> I kind of review most of the designs before they go out and kind of collaborate with one or both designers. Yeah. Um, if it's a larger project, we definitely all work together. You're all together it. trying to come up with something? Yep. So it's not like uh, you're going to give her three options or whatever, and each person has their own design they came up with. You're more like, we're going to all work together and make right. this and throw ideas at each other. Yeah. Okay. We usually go, like, the best we can do right out of the gate and, and present it to them. And then if we have to adjust or tailor it a little bit more to their tastes or or their budget, then we'll we'll circle back at that point. But So would, would you consider yourself an architect of some sort at that point? when you're doing these designs and everything? Because there are landscape architects, right? Right. The difference between a, a, design, a landscape designer is we just have have the schooling and the, the interest and, and mostly just experience. Uh, landscape architects obviously went to school. They're closer to an architect than they are probably any. So it's more of like a title type thing? I mean, you're doing the same work almost when you're designing. They do a lot more with like engineered walls and uh, elevation changes and things like that. They're going to do a lot more of like... Mathematical engineering type stuff? Yeah, not all of them, but more like commercial... Like Walmarts are only going to hire a landscape architect to design their landscape. Oh, okay. You know, because of storm water and sort of thing parking lots and do you ever wish you would have been a landscape architect no 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 i mean there's i guess you could say i'd I'd have that title but it really doesn't matter to me the title part of it a lot of the times not always the landscape architects nor don't know enough about the plant material they know like kind of what works but then like we'll have to say, well, we're not going to plant these or we suggest you use these instead right. of those and that sort of thing. Those aren't going to work here. They just think it looks pretty. They're like, this would look great here, but you're like, well, that doesn't even grow here. Right. And yeah. there's probably customers like that too, don't you think? Yeah, you definitely have to. That have said, like, I want I want a lemon tree. Yeah. And you're like, well, that doesn't grow here. <laughs> yeah. Like, we can put a pot, put it in a pot for you, and you can take it in every, every year, but that's yeah. about as far as it's going to go. <laughs> yeah. I can just see some snobby people out there just trying to request for things like that that you're like, yeah, that's not going to work out. And then you're going to blame the landscapers because it died. Yeah. You know. Well, the gardening side of it, I mean, even myself, I'm not, I don't know everything. I learn something every day. Yeah. And it's trial and error to, to some points you know you know it works or if you want to use a new plant how much sun it takes or shade that sort of thing so um, some of the best designers or some you know they've just been doing it for years Mm -hmm. and they just have educated themselves on what works what looks they're just experts on their yeah their own area in kansas what what complements them you know what plant complements another plant that sort of thing yeah like Stephen Brady, he he's kind of that way when he was on here. Shout out to Stephen, by the way. He's a great dude. Yeah, he is a great he's dude. He's passionate about uh, the trees and the plants that grow in our area specifically, you know. Right. And he likes to help people and help them pick out the right one. If they're leaning this way, he likes to say, you know, this would actually do a lot better in this area. Yep. And that's, that's a cool thing, I think, to learn. Because my dad got screwed back in the day. We built our house out there in um, 99 or 2000. And uh, he got talked into planting a bunch of maple trees down in his driveway, which he has, you know, seven acres in the yard. Mm -hmm. So he was lining up a long driveway with maple trees. Well, it's in the middle of nowhere. It was a wheat field back then. And those things all throughout my childhood, we battled with that. We'd go out there and tie them up. They would snap in half. They would get sun scald real bad on the trunks, you know. Yeah. They might do great in Wichita or somewhere where it's more shaded, but out in the country, just in a field, they don't do good. Yeah. And he finally, last year, planted all oaks. And so him and I dug a lot of holes 
It was yeah. like the movie Holes. Yeah. Were they shoe marks? <laughs> um, I don't know. Pen Oaks, maybe? I don't know. I just know that he bought a truck bed full one time, and he was like, all right, we're going to start digging. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. But those those maples, they just didn't do good. He got talked into it. He wanted to do oaks from the start. Yeah. I don't know what kind of oak, but sure. it's like, damn it, you know, that was 20 years ago. Yeah. And now we're starting over with tiny trees again. Right. Yeah. Actually, maples are probably overplanted at this point. Yeah. Everybody wants that fall red color. Exactly. And... Which they're beautiful. I mean, our driveway was beautiful for yeah. years. What happens is you plant too many, too many of one thing. Um, you start thinking about, let's say, the canopy of Wichita, right? So you probably notice all the pine trees that are just all over, just <clears throat> devastated or yeah. dead or gone. We plant too many of one thing, and a disease or an insect comes along that we can't combat, and then you're losing thousands and oh. thousands of trees. That makes me sick to see those pine trees dying like that. Yeah. Are they all screwed, you think, at this point around here? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, there's no native pine tree to Kansas. There's They've all been brought here. Mm-hmm. There's a few that still aren't affected by that nematode that carries the pine cedars? wood disease. Are they C- affected? Cedars aren't, no. no. Those it's, are native, right? Right. The eastern red cedar is. Eastern red cedar. Yeah. Yep. What about... Uh, evergreen is that a tree yeah that's like a type of like you could evergreen would like a cedar would be in the under evergreen oh okay so evergreen's not an actual name of a tree it's just kind of the type yeah it's kind of evergreen or that a cedar is it'd be like saying deciduous like deciduous would be like a tree that leaves it loses its leaves okay you know what's crazy is that at my dad's place also he planted blue spruces and those things are doing fantastic. Probably because he doesn't water them. That's what happens. I don't think he waters them. Yeah. Mm-mm. There's blue spruce would grow here and be gorgeous and huge. Most of the ones that you see that are doing well here, it's because they're not watered by city irrigated water. Really? Or, yeah. A lot of people kill them with kindness. They water them too much, or they don't need a lot of water. No. Because those are like a Colorado tree, right? Yeah, if you think of them, they're on a slope. That's true. They're usually water, on like a mountainside. The water runs away from them, so they don't like wet feet. But one thing I did notice about the Colorado blue spruces versus the ones that I'm used to is that the Colorado ones are a lot taller, skinnier. I mean, they look straight You up. see it, you're like, okay, this is a mountain tree. Yeah. And in Kansas, they get fat as hell. Yeah. They're just like a big it's Christmas tree. they have the room to do it. Is that why? That's cool. To a certain point. I mean, there's different species that will only get so wide and things like that. But So you think it's a good tree to plant around here if you don't water it? If done, right? Yeah, I think if you put it on like a berm or, you know, if you go stick it in front of your fescue lawn, like right out in the middle, it's probably not going to do so well. That's probably why we have such good blue spruces. Everybody always compliments me on those at my dad's house, and it's because they have buffalo out there, yep. buffalo grass, so none of it's ever watered or anything. Yep interesting yeah. and it's on a slope because it's kind of by the house so the dirt comes up you know and yeah those are all good points i never really thought about that yep yeah are there any other trees that are cool to have around here that i don't know about there's tons <laughs> probably one of my favorite avocado uh you can grow an avocado in a <clears throat> actually Inside. Somebody, well somebody threw some out in a compost one time and grew it grew out of that compost you're kidding there. me yeah Nature finds a way. Yeah. I don't think it survived <laughs> the winter, but it definitely grew through the summer. That's wow. Pretty, pretty neat. That's badass. Well, do you have any th- other advice or anything you'd give to somebody out there that wants to like, start a business or is trying to get into landscaping or landscape design? Uh, well, you brought it up with Steve and, uh, Steve and I are actually on the Kansas N- uh, Nursery and Landscape <clears throat> Association together. Um there's a lot of the younger generation that aren't getting into that industry mm-hmm. like others, you know, yeah, like electricians, plumbing, electricians. plumbers. I think anything in the service industry, I think, I think the youth should give it a chance, you know, whether it's landscaping or really, you know, construction science, any of that kind of stuff. We I think it's a good career path. Um, well, it's not going away. It's definitely not going to, you know, go you're away. never ever going to be in a time where you don't need landscapers right right 
right. Unless it, the Earth becomes total concrete like three thousand years from now, but yeah. in the near future, you're you're golden. Yep. Everybody needs landscaping. Yeah, you definitely have to. I mean, I think you know as long as you I think are passionate about what you do, I think that's most important. It took me a little bit to figure out what I was passionate about and. I didn't think it was going to be this by any means, uh, but it was something I, you know, I think every job you're not, it's a job. Well, there's going to be days you don't want to get up and go do your job, but right. Um, I think if you're passionate about it and you're willing to do it day in and day out, and, um, the best part of my job, uh, I, or our job, I think, is we can go do something like where it's a blank slate, and then you actually get rewarded at the end of. Oh yeah, yeah. That's probably the best part, as as far as I'm concerned. But well, it's people out there that are debating whether they should get into landscape or not. Just look at mowing your own lawn. That's something that I take gratification in. When I'm done, I mow my whole lawn. I get done. I sit on the porch with a beer, and I'm like, "Wow, yep. you know that? Look how beautiful that looks. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Can be therapeutic at, at times. Too, yeah, for sure. And there's something to that. Like a lot of people don't get that. They're a lot of people just clock out. And they go home, and that's the end of their day. But when you guys are finished with the job, you can actually look around and say, look how awesome this looks now. Yeah. That's a cool part of your job. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of art to it as far as I'm concerned. and I think it's uh, very rewarding at the end of the day. But you've had trouble finding younger people to hire? Uh, definitely. I mean, and I think, I think you know, with uh, our board and stuff that – K-State, there's definitely a lot. Everybody's moving into the easier, you know, turf science. They want to work on a golf course or, you know, there's not a lot of landscape designers, Mm -hmm. you know, taking those courses anymore or landscape architects and things like that. So it's definitely something I think people should look into if if they enjoy that sort of thing or enjoy plants or, you know, just getting your – you definitely are going to get dirty, but – you might not even know that you enjoy it like you were you know you just took it as a job at the start right i think when i was a kid i despised when my parents took me to the nursery (laughs) or something like that (laughs) i did not think this is bullshit what do we need this for just turf the lawn dad it's just another they all look the same to me yeah it's a tree tree. a tree a tree you know like (laughs) Look how far you've come now, right? Yeah, for sure. Now you can walk out of here and you can probably point out every tree and go, oh, that was a good decision to put that there. Yeah, yeah, good and bad for sure. You know what's cool is that if you go down on South 183rd Street, south of 21st, my grandma, who just passed away, she was born in 1930, and that was during the Dust Bowl. Mm -hmm. So the government would send seeds in the mail for you to plant trees, and there's big cottonwoods that line the driveway of her old farmhouse down there. I mean, massive. Yeah. They're probably close to, well, my grandma's age, so 92, 93. And um, she said she remembers being out there with her dad, having a packet of seeds from the government, planting one by one, yep. all those cottonwoods. Yep. And you drive by that now, and I'll drive by it every now and then and be like, holy shit, that's yeah. badass. It's you funny know? you brought that up. I mean, just the winds we were having last month. Yeah. You know, like, I think it was brought up, like, if we didn't do the things that we do today like the farming and wind breaks and different things like that mm-hmm. like we would have that definitely would have been a time we would have been in another dust bowl it would be sure. a totally different place right now if oh, we yeah. didn't yeah because back then they didn't have near the trees and stuff we have now yeah so that's that's cool well um any last words or anything you want to say to landscapers or future landscapers um well, I or appreciate, business owners if someone I, yeah i appreciate you having me on um I would just say, you know, I'd be, I'd be willing to help anybody that's wanting to get started in any end, you know, small business. Yeah. Um, I could, I'm not, I don't know everything, but I know what mistakes I made. Right. And I, I could tell you what I learned from. Um, as far as the landscaping side, I think, you know, be observant. Uh, customer care is always going to get you a long way. Yeah. A long way. Very surprised in our industry. Um, how many times we hear can't believe you showed up can't believe you answered the phone you were on time you got back can't believe us, you actually responded gave us an estimate mm-hmm. you know, there, I mean it's not hard 
Taking care of your customers, that's one of the big takeaways you've learned. Number one. Number one. If you do that, you, you've already... You're already ahead. Uh, yeah, you're already halfway there. Well, hell yeah, man. That's awesome. These conversations are so valuable to me, especially with people like you that have taken the leap and just gone through the steps to start your own business. I mean, there's nobody out there better to give advi- get advice from than somebody like you that just started out not expecting to do anything other than get a job, and then you took your own route and made your own business out of it. That's that's cool, and it's good for people to hear, so I'm glad I got to talk to you about that finally. Yeah, appreciate it. You know? that's, that's how I got started. I talked to somebody that did the same thing I did. And yeah. They taught me, you know, this is, this is what you do, this is what you don't do, and this, yeah. this is what's going to help you get where you want to be. And That's good stuff, man. Yep. Yeah, no, I think you're, you're, what you're doing here is really cool, and I'd love to come back anytime. Oh, hell yeah, man, anytime you want. You know, we're we're good friends. Oh yeah. You can hit me up whenever you need me to. Yeah, I think last time I was interrogated like this in a call which it didn't go so well. So. That was probably with one of those bum <laughs> cops we have around here. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. They're good cops. Um tell everybody where they can find you and how they can reach you. Uh you can find us on uh Instagram. I think it's Metal Arc Lawn I C T. Uh, if I'm wrong, I forgive me. I'll find My it. Marketing and it'll be... staff will kill me. But, no, I'll find it and uh, I'll put it in the description. And then uh, Metal Arc Landscape is on Facebook, and then uh, MetalArcLawn.com is our uh, is your website. Yep. MetalArcLawn.com. Right. Okay. Yep. And then um, people can reach you personally if they wanted to get something done, or are, is your number on all those websites and social medias? Yeah. So yeah. just go to your website or go to your social media and they can find yep. numbers to call, get right. something scheduled. Right. Yep. Right on, man. Well, hell yeah. Cheers to all your success and everything that you've had. I'm sure you're proud of what you've done. Oh, yeah. Where you're at yeah. now, you know, yeah. 26 employees. 26, yeah. It's, at some point, it's going to be considered not a small business anymore, you that's, know. That's true. I'll have to start giving them insurance. <laughs> <laughs> no, screw that. You cap it before you get to that point. Yeah. <laughs> No, I am very proud, but I wouldn't be where I'm at without my employees and and everybody that stood stood with me. So yeah. I'm proud of all of us, and um, we've come a long way in the last 10 years for sure. So. Hell yeah, brother. I'm happy for you. I love hearing stories like yours. So if anybody in the Wichita area needs landscaping, reach, reach out to Luke at Metal Arc Landscape, and he'll hook you up. And all that stuff's in my description that he just said, by the way. So go click on it. Appreciate it. Hell yeah, man. Cheers to you. Cheers. That's a wrap. (laughs) 